Hi. Name? Sharon Scarf. Um, what do you do? I act in sex films. Do you, do you like to act in sex films? I love it. It's my favorite thing. I would do it seven days a week if I could. You want to buy some acid? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Fuck them, we got checks! I'm working my chest, I'm working my triceps, I'm working the back of my calves, and I'm working my heart, and I'm working my lungs. I'm working my butt <laughs> I'll tell you what, BK, why don't you just take your mama home some chicken, and then I won't have to stuff my food all up in your ass. Man, you are one crazy motherfucker. But it's all Hello, fellow addicts, and welcome to... Eat shit and die, Ricky! John Doyle will certainly feel that way if he ever sees this. Especially since I keep calling him Brian Doyle. I don't even know who the fuck Brian Doyle is, or why I keep calling him that, but, uh... My apologies, Brian. Alright. So, let's get on with this. Let, let's just get started. About porn, love to see it. We knew it was coming, and the idea behind it, for those unfamiliar, is basically that there's this meme called No Nut November that we just got done with a couple months ago, a little late, and uh, the challenge is basically to go the entire month of November without masturbating. All right, so you you and your friends get together and hold your loads for the entire month of November. Yeah, doesn't it all sound like a weird gay man activity? What happens on December first? Get a cracker. You guys play a game of Oki Koki to fight childhood diabetes. I've got a mountain of data to back this up if you'll just bear with me. But first, I just want you to ask yourself a question, which is just very simply, am I addicted to pornography? No, I don't. And neither does anybody else because porn addiction is nonsense. Now, you want to know what people are addicted to? And this is really sad. They're addicted to looking for a, a savior figure. And of course, there's egomaniacal grifters like this guy looking to provide that for them. But what he's doing is essentially everything that a pharmaceutical ad does when it comes on the television. I mean, unless it's like advertising medication for like arthritis or some, something real, but anything to do with a uh, mental illness or a uh, depression, they'll do that. They'll be like, they'll name off some vague symptoms like, you know, lack of interest or, you know, stuff like that. They'll play soft music, but they'll ask, are you feeling depressed? Does this sound like you? And see, every adult uh, has a baseline level of stress going on in their life. So it's real easy to be a little bit down in the dumps and hear that commercial enough and start to ask, am I depressed? And then you'll start looking for, and then you start looking for ways that you could be. And then you start finding ways that you could be. Because everybody, the living life, could find a reason to be unhappy Especially if there is something going on. Now, rather than figuring out what that is, they just go, well, here, take this pill and your brain will numb out and you'll just ignore it. Same deal here, except what he does is even more ridiculous because he's going to ask, ask you to ask yourself if you're a porn addict, then show you a, a statistic that 98% of men are, have accessed porn in the last six months months last week whatever he'll give a time frame and since you're a normal healthy man with a normal healthy man sex drive that'll probably apply to you and then you'll go ah oh, shit i don't know am i a porn addict what are the parameters for being a porn addict well according to john doyle it is simply not being john doyle he who doesn't toucheth his penis the blessed one uh so what he's going to do is he's going to put you in a position to where you're a porn addict, regardless to whether or not you're a porn addict. All you have to do is simply not hold his hatred, quote unquote, of porn to be a porn addict. So there's no defending yourself to John Doyle and going, hey, dude, look, man, I 
If you watch it at all, if you enjoy it at all, there's no, you have no option or agency, according to John Doyle. And this is a big problem in our society, much more than pornography, is uh, weak-ass fucking people looking to blame something other than themselves for what they do to their own lives and to themselves and to other people. It's always got to be something else's fault. It's a mental illness's fault. I have a mental illness that allows me to somehow do all the stuff I'm interested in, but when it comes to doing things to make your life easier, uh, fuck you. That's when it's time to feel sorry for me. Tiger Woods was not cheating on his wife because he has a sex addiction. He was cheating on his wife because he fucking could. Period. And if you want to save masculinity, this therapeutic, uh, nothing's your fault, uh, take no responsi- blame other things and take no responsibility might be the least masculine thing you could possibly preach to anybody. But then again, the red pill group doesn't seem to be particularly masculine. And I gotta say this, fellas, nobody, and I mean fucking nobody, in this, on this earth, believes you when you say you are saving it for marriage. That is not how the male-female courtship works. You're the pursuer, not the pursuee. It doesn't come to you, okay? Rarely does it come to you. And you're not good with girls, you fumbled, and you couldn't get laid, and that's what you go back on. Well, saving myself for marriage anyway. It's such a cope. This entire front half of his video, because he's going to brag about this mountain of data, but his mountain of data is nothing more than... It's basically the same science used by Professor Dave to convince your kids that they're, they could be a little boy or a little girl. It just depends on what their uh, neurochemicals are doing in their brain. Nothing has to do with your own choices. You have no agency. You have no control. What you need to do is uh, stop watching porn, go to John Doyle seminars, convince yourself that you're an addict, and give him money to cure you and pretend to give a shit. I assure you, he does not give a fuck. He is in this for the money. And hey, even if you are saving yourself for marriage, gives a shit. That's not cool. I mean, it really isn't. That's not good for the girl, either. Ask Steven Crowder's wife. Here's what you end up being if you hang on to your virginity too long as a guy. You end up being a guy who tells his pregnant wife he's going to fuck her up if she doesn't uh, rub dog cream that's bad for her uh, unborn children uh, on the dog. And no, and I, I don't see him as some abusive, manipulative sociopath unless you work for him, but... Uh, as his wife, I'm just, uh, as a dude, I'm sitting there watching that going like, rookie mistake, rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Boy, I remember my first girlfriend. That's why I enjoyed that so much. Where you're sitting there oh, with a gun on your hip going, shame on you for, you know, getting laid like an actual man. And he's one of those dudes that go after Amy. Actually, he's the guy that started the whole Amy show. Him and Gavin McGinnis. Uh, started that whole Amy. Do you, you realize if Amy Schumer had had taken this dude's V card when he was offering it to her all those years ago, her leather special would have actually did fine. People didn't like get weren't so like, oh, this sucks, and just run to Netflix and start hitting the thumbs down button based solely on how bad that special was. Steven Crowder was watching the special, him and uh, not gay Jared, and ripping on it live as it was premiering live with his live stream audience and for however many, many thousands or millions of people were watching it, they were the ones who were going there and, and hitting all the negative reviews. Because, you know, you can't be funny unless you're promoting family values because that's so fucking funny. I'm, use all this drug language like detox and use and addiction. Just reinforce the fact that you have an addiction. It's not a fucking addiction. But to those who aren't coping, to those who don't think they're addicted, or to those who just aren't sure, here's my challenge to you. Detox for 60 days. And if you're not addicted, shouldn't be a problem, right? And if you don't notice any significant improvements in your life, 
Send me an email. Tell me I'm wrong. That's not hard, dude. Anyone can do that. Anybody can go 60 days without watching porn. You've probably done that a million times, and you don't realize it because you have shit to do. You're not marking days off a calendar waiting for John Doyle to let you guiltily view a tit. Anything that you are making a conscious effort not to do that you normally do becomes very, very hard. The second you go, I'm not smoking anymore, you start counting the minutes that it's been since you haven't had a cigarette in 10 minutes, I haven't had a cigarette in 15 minutes, I haven't had a cigarette in two hours. You're just going to keep reminding yourself that you haven't done it in that long, which is going to make you want to do it. But even still, just having stuff to do or being busy or being around people, that's that's easy to not watch porn. It's easy to not watch porn anyway. It's not that fucking hard. <clears throat> but what he's going to do is that He's going to try to, he's going to throw in don't masturbate for 60 days. All right. Now that is setting you up to fail because I'm sorry, you're a young man. You have testosterone. You want to fuck because you're healthy. You're going to jerk off. Okay. And you know what? Even if you don't, you're going to be blowing it out in your fucking sleep. That's going to be real fun if you're on a plane, if you fall asleep on a plane or on a bus you know, waking up with cum stains all over you and people taking pictures of it and posting you online. Now look at this asshole came in his pants. What are you pushing a nocturnal admissions fetish? It's gonna come out anyway, so what do you what does it fucking matter? I can get it out the fun way or I can I can get it out the aggravating way, which is I gotta uh, separate my dick from my shorts like it's fucking super glued. Unless you are making not jacking off and John Doyle, the number one focus of your life, at some point, you're probably going to even forget you started the this little dumb internet challenge. And even if you do, once your body, because maybe you have been jacking off too much, maybe you have been watching too much porn, but if you do slack off for about, I don't know, half of a month, you're going to build up some testosterone in your body again, and then you're going to actually start thinking like a guy, and the way guys think is, uh, I don't let, uh, fuck this guy. I, he, I'm letting this snotty twerp on the internet tell me what I can and can't do or can't, yeah, fuck him. And then they jack off. And then they again stumble back into your, uh, you again, and here they have a porn addiction, and then they go, ah, I got, I got, I failed. Why don't you just tell women not to menstruate, too, while you're at it, you fucking asshole? I know, and you could say it's not the same thing, but it kind of is. Women get cranky and bitchy and bloaty and crampy and all that shit because their body's having to expel an unused egg. With dudes, it just goes the other way around. We turn into fucking monsters if we don't get rid of that shit. There's a reason boxers and fighters and shit, if they got a big fight coming up, they don't, they make it a point not to have sex or or jerk off for the three months or so leading up to the fight. That's a that's a that's a fighter thing. Because I'm about to fight somebody, I want to be pissed off. I want to have as much rage running through my body. I want to be on a hair trigger to hit something. I want to be as unrelaxed as humanly fucking possible. That's why. That's what happens. So any of these guys running around that's smiling, going, I haven't jerked off in 90 days. Woo! First off, what do you want us to do? Throw you on our shoulders like you're some kind of hero? Who gives a fuck, first off? And secondly, you'd be probably more pissed off and aggressive if you didn't. The fact that you're fucking smiling lets us know you're lying. And secondly, you want to know who actually, I, I would believe, doesn't jerk off? Again, Steven Crowder. He's a fucking dick. That's why. That's why he's such a fucking dick. But even if you are taking this seriously and really trying, you'll probably fail. Probably. He knows it has a high rate of failure. That's why he picked 60 days. Now, it's not impossible to do that. I mean, there's plenty of people with no hands, I'm sure, that can attest to that being possible. But it's not going to be pleasant. Especially, again, if you're counting days, minutes, and seconds. And if he's really got you convinced that you're an addict then he's just going to keep you in a cycle of keeping coming back to him for counsel over and over and over again. 
And again, keep attending his seminars, keep subscribing to his podcast so you can achieve the level of enlightenment of John Doyle and you cannot masturbate. Again, this is this is why the men's movement is becoming pathetic. You know, you really need better representation. You know who actually is uh, encouraging masculinity more than Tim Pool or any of these other podcaster guys? Cardi B. She ain't t I wanna go, I wanna gag, I wanna choke, I want you to touch that little dangly thing that's swinging the back of my throat. My head can miss fire. She's saying be a man, be a big, strong man with a huge dick. She wants big dick energy, she wants big dick money, she wants, like, now I'm a young, I'm, I'm put yourself in the mind. Cardi B is a terrible role model for women. Yes. Or for young girls. Yes. For a boy? This bitch is gonna get him into women. And since you have such a problem with feminized men and gay men and homosexuality and transsexuality, I don't know, maybe you might want your uh, a boy a, a, of any age to maybe acquire a taste for women. To the entire fighting for masculinity movement, or a bunch of wimps, or closeted homosexuals. Yeah, Jack Murphy. What a pillar of what a what an icon of masculinity. I'm supposed to think he's some kind of like a tough man's man because he doesn't shave. Yeah, another one. Don't watch porn. Don't masturbate. Don't do this. Yeah, and then his webcam leaks and he's getting fucked in the ass by his wife with a 12 inch dildo. What a man. Don't want to poke. I want to pump. Don't wanna moan, I wanna grunt. I want you to touch that little tickly spot to be way up inside of my butt. But then you got the red pillar guys that never shut up about how much women suck at everything. And then on the other hand, you got the people, the progressives on the left telling them any time he approaches a woman and hits on her, he's a creep and a rapist. You can't fucking win if you're a young man. And the right, I'm sick of this shit, dude. The right, the, these guys on the right, they don't like women. They like wives. Okay, but... But fine, go 60 days without watching porn, and hey, good for you if you can make it 60 days without jacking off. I'm not going to give you a medal or be proud of you, because who gives a fuck? Again, it's not an accomplishment. I'm not going to get, I do, I'm not awarding credit to anybody for not doing something. Can we stop doing that shit, too? Anyway, just in general. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I got a challenge for, for you to take. Not John Doyle, fuck him. Um person listening to this who might be on the fence on this porn addiction thing or well particularly in the in the uh the area of causing depression because this is another thing that that uh john doyle claims or all these things that claim that uh, porn is what's causing all this massive depression so i want you to try this once you have john doyle's permission to whack off and watch porn again i want you to try 60 days without listening to a podcast. None. No podcast whatsoever. Not even mine. Assuming that this this show has taken off enough to where I have enough followers that might have back went back and, you know, caught, it, it, 60 days without my bullshit, 60 days without John Doyle telling you you're a, uh, a porn addict, 60 days without Tim Pool telling you we're on the verge of civil war, 60 days without Anthony Cumia yelling about blacks and Gavin McGinnis sitting next to him pretending he's heterosexual. 60 days, 60 fucking days, without tinfoil hat. 60 days without Alex Jones telling you uh, the globalists are taking over and all that shit. All of it. 60 days without some snarky liberal uh, giving some dumb analysis on a movie. See, with 60 days without hearing about how the world is on fire and how fucked up everything is. See, with 60 days without having the weight of the world sitting on your shoulders and being just consumed with problems that barely have anything to do with you, if nothing to do with you, and even if they do, they're so fucking big, they're, you can't do anything about it. 60 days without hearing about Do uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. See what 60 days without that's like. 60 days without, uh, two months, two glorious months of no updates from Dave Rubin or Brandon Tatum to tell you about whatever the fuck Joe Rogan or Bill Maher said uh, this week. See, get all, take all of that out of your life for 60 days 
and see which one puts more of a pep in your step. You want to talk about something that gives you a feeling of fucking hopelessness? I've never been more depressed since the podcasting shit has, podcasts have entered my life. I don't know if John Doyle's aware of this, but Leave It to Beaver was a TV show. It ain't real. All right, we, They didn't have reality TV back then. Nobody thought of that dog shit until Jackass. So, you've never seen the 50s. You don't know what the 50s look like. You don't know the ugly side of the 50s. And see, when you see the 50s portrayed now, it's dishonest completely in the other direction. However... It really was more of a mix of both. Like, it wasn't the... I mean, I don't remember it either. But things that people like him don't know because they, they fantasize about the 50s and how great it was. Again, because of Leave it to Beaver and the Andy Griffith show. But you couldn't do anything on TV. Like, it was a big deal when, like, people saw... Uh, uh, the first time you saw a couple in the same bed together... It was like, they sleep in the same bed on television? A married couple? Like, th that was actually seen. A married couple couldn't sleep in the same bed together on television. They had to have separate beds. It was a big deal, for some reason, that Archie Bunker flushed a toilet on TV. That was seen as obscene. And that was the 70s. The 50s, on the other hand, had none of that. It was a... The, the, the films had no rebellion in them whatsoever. They were mostly government propaganda. Well, actually, because they were still figuring out movies. <clears throat> so it was like, you don't want something to be a heap of junk. It's like you wanted everything to look good and crisp. And nobody actually figured out acting all that much yet. And even still, those movies were usually taking place in the 30s or 20s. Or it was a Western the movies about the 50s, made in the 50s, is still so overly sanitized and clean that there's no, not even anything resembling real life whatsoever. And that divorce rate you guys keep bitching about, it's not all in because the government started, Lyndon Johnson put welfare into effect and it incentivized single motherhood. In fact, if you really go back and think about the first person that thought of that idea of uh, going, well, we'll give you more money if you were a single mother, I don't think that was to necessarily, originally at least, incentivize women to be single and shit out babies all over the place and collect welfare. That was just the consequence of, of making a rule, but it was mostly saying, look, you're married, you got three kids, you're still coming here getting welfare, how about get rid of that bag of shit and get a guy that makes money? That I think that was the actual premise. Get rid of the bum and get a, get an actual man that can take care of you but instead, they just go, oh, I make more money if I'm single? Okay, well, hunt me and dump me. I need more money. I need a raise. But no, where the divorce rate actually comes from is despite the fact that uh, what you think the 50s were like, teen pregnancy was a kind of a big deal back then. A lot of teens getting pregnant. And the reason it was like everybody was married. Yeah, their parents made them get married. It's called a shotgun wedding. You get married and raise the kid. That was the con. It was pun marrying the some girl you banged and knocked up was punishment for knocking her up. Getting knocked up meant you had to marry this asshole. This dude, you don't even know if you love him. Probably didn't. I liked him for a second. So after, you know, a good... And then they're a couple. They end up having more kids and shit. But after the kids are grown... Right around the, six, the late 60s, early 70s, when divorce started kind of taking off, it was because the kids were grown, and these two people no longer needed to be together anymore. They didn't li love each other. They didn't like each other. But because of all the dumb customs in the 50s, like you had to be married, uh, if you, you got her pregnant, yeah, that's what you ended up with. A lot of loveless relationships. You know, if you love the 50s that much, you would actually smoke that cigarette. And I also got to love to point out the irony here. You're selling people a fake addiction, pretending to fight it, and then promoting a real addiction. And then not even having the, the decency to have either addiction. Thanks for my cigarette, hon. I definitely need it. I had to fire the new girl today. She served a hamburger to a Negro. I gave her tit one last squeeze and told her to heck off, commie. Certainly hope supper's on the table, dear. 
Me and the boys at the lodge are going to have a stag party. Again, showing your complete ignorance of the time period. Maybe somebody should tell John Doyle that heck isn't the politically correct pussy way to say fuck in the 50s. It was the politically pussy way to say hell in the 50s. Nobody said heck off. That doesn't even make sense. It'd be great if somebody could actually invent a time machine. Not one that would take you back or you can actually change anything, but just take a walking tour. And you can just actually just go see history happen. So all, all of these people that just love to wax fantastic about some of these awful fucking times that were in the past can see how much it actually sucked. See that people were actually dog shit then the way they are now. And wouldn't it be great just that these conservatives go to, like, some founding fathers meeting and hear Ben Franklin go, He who sacrifices liberty for security deserves neither. And then they're all just like, oh, gushing, he said it. And then John Adams pipes up and goes, Ben, we just want you to go in your office and close the door if you're going to jack off. That's all we want. Equally fun watching progressive white women fawn over Indians. Oh, look, he killed a deer. Oh, he's kneeling down. He's going to pray for his spirit like they did in Avatar. And then he just starts teabagging the deer's head. Good, good, very good kill. Now, we bring him back to village and throw him on fire for the deers are faggots dance. Hi, yeah, 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 deers are faggots. Hi, yeah, 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 they're not food. Everybody would be coming out of the time machine crying. Was, ben Franklin never jacked off. Ben Franklin never jacked off. That's not true. Liberals are lying. That Elizabeth degenerates. Then all of the, the, the other side would come out. The MAGA people made this. Elon Musk is a racist. Native Americans had wings. They were angels. I feel like there's other factors to the erectile dysfunction thing he's ignoring that I think we could weed out uh, the cause a little more than, oh, it must be because they're watching pornography. Like, what kind of medications are they on? Like, SSRI type medications. Anybody bother to ask that in your little study? Anybody at the uh, St. Mary's Tabernacle of Science? Uh, bother to ask that question because uh, so many most people are running around just eating some type of anti-psychotic or anti-ADHD or ADD so most of your test subjects are medicated up the wazoo you know maybe that might play a role in the erectile dysfunction thing how many of the people in that survey were also morbidly obese because that really affects a guy's ability to get wood as far as uh, needing to fantasize about porn or pornography with their sexual partners, eh, you're probably bored with her. I mean, if you have to fantasize about porn to get off with a woman the first time you're with her, then yeah, all right, maybe you got a problem, but you've been a good year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years in a relationship. You got plenty of reasons not to want to fuck that woman that have nothing to do with porn. You know what keeps me from getting off with a girl that I'm with? When I hate her fucking guts. That's what keeps me from getting off with my partner. That's what causes me to lose wood or fantasize about other women when I can't stand this fucking bitch anymore. Pornography. Because after a few generations of men experiencing the symptoms that we just listed, the country will collapse. Like, it simply can't survive that. No society has ever faced anything like this before. And if you care about this country, then you have to be disciplined. What do we always say? A disciplined mind is an effective mind. Aristotle said, I count him braver who overcomes his desires than him who conquers his enemies, for the hardest victory is over self. He also said, we are what we repeatedly do. What's the matter, smart ass? You don't know any fucking Shakespeare? Yes, but we shouldn't forget Aristotle's contemporary, Fred Flintstone, uh, who also said this. Woman, in the buffet of life, there are no second helpers. You're going to fill up your plate, top off your cup, and stuff a few rolls in your pocket. <laughs> It is 2024, year of our Lord. Please stop thinking you are some kind of profound uh, scribe of wisdom or that you sound smart or well-read because you are tossing me fortune cookie quotes from a fucking Neanderthal. I don't give a fuck what Aristotle had to say. Another great use of that time machine. Go back in time, watch him say that. Yeah, then he fucked a little boy in the butt. Who gives a shit about Aristotle? Fuck him. Yeah, mankind's first influencer. The communists love this quote, too. 
really makes for the foundations of a great anti-capitalism argument. Trends in society. History suggests that, you know, eventually the hard times will create the strong men, right? Maybe. But the huge difference now is that everyone is pacified. Everyone is totally numb. Like, how do you prevent hard times from breeding strong men? I would like to hear this fucking phrase just once said by somebody I can't bitch slap out of their socks. I mean, I can't even fight. All right. But it's always little weaklings that love using this. It's never a guy who, uh, you know, the guy that killed bin Laden doesn't run around fucking saying this. No, it's always guys like Tim Pool. Yeah, I've gotten all of these responses from people. I've had people come up to me at events with tears in their eyes talking to me about how this issue has affected them. Those guys are facts. I'm not defending my addiction. I just have zero sympathy for any grown man who has this problem. I mean, I'm real sorry your wife walked in on you and your buddy sucking each other off in your fucking man cave. But rather than trying to go, ah, porn, I have a porn addiction. She just be honest. It's like, look, sweetie, you haven't blown me in eight months. Steve's wife hasn't blown him in a year and a half. We've been sucking each other's dick since we met in 1995 at summer camp. I don't know. I never thought of it as cheating. No, I have a porn addiction. We were looking at, we, we looked at a video of a, of a girl, a naked woman. Next thing I know, I, I blacked out and you were yelling at me and Steve's balls were on my nose and I'm going, bruh, bruh, bruh. Ugh. take some responsibility. So I'm trying to find, and also look, I, I can see by the Daisy air rifle behind you, right under your swastika poster. And I'm not stupid. I know it's a war bonds, uh, to help our boys fight the Nazis poster. I get that, because I'm not stupid. But still, uh, you're sitting in front of a fucking swastika, idiot. It doesn't look good. It's not good optics. The fact that I gotta do a double take and look at that thing to figure out, oh, okay, that's what that is. That's not good, dude. Most people, a lot of people don't do that. The right already has a problem with being falsely labeled as Nazis. That shit doesn't help. It's called optics, retard. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I imagine when somebody, when an Adam Lanza or somebody, or Dylan Roof or somebody like that goes into some public place like an elementary school with an AR-15 and starts shooting kids with it, I bet you get real defensive and stand up and go, it's not the AR-15's fault. It's not the AR-15's fault. You can't blame the AR-15 for what people do. Guns don't p kill people. People kill people. And look, I agree with you. It's not the AR-15's fault. It's not. But blaming pornography for the family disintegrating is the same thing as blaming an AR-15 for mass shootings. You're going the same idiotic route. It's the same stupid fucking thinking is what I'm getting at here. And the same way that you cannot educate the gun grabbers about guns who think an AR-15 is a fucking Thompson machine gun from the 1920s or some super-powered weapon they saw in some dumb Marvel movie, nobody evidently can convince you that people can just view pornography simply because they've made a choice, an adult choice, to enjoy it! by themselves. They don't need an addiction. They don't need the excuse of your neurochemicals are misfiring and you're, you're on drugs. No, they made a choice to enjoy something and it's their fucking right to do it. Period. And you don't like it. And the gun grabbers don't like uh, any data that says that the a taking away the AR-15 will stop mass shootings. You both live under the same ignorant delusion. So dopamine causes us to desire and seek things, but dopamine is also a stronger system than our opioid system, which means that we're always seeking more than we are satisfied. And the reason for that is that seeking and desiring is more likely to keep us alive than just sitting around satiated, satisfied, in a daze doing nothing. But the problem is that this imbalance, when overstimulated, leads ultimately to addiction because the desires and the cravings increase while the pleasure you get decreases. So you want something more and more, but you don't like it as much as you used to, so you compensate by craving more of it, and the cycle continues. Another thing that we mentioned earlier that plays a big role here is novelty. That's the Coolidge effect. Dopamine surges for novelty. Without novelty, it diminishes over time. They've done studies where they'll show a group of men part of an X-rated movie and measure their dopamine, and it gets lower every time they play it back, and then they play part of a different one, and it shoots right back 
back up. And it's also No! Watching something you've already watched is less exciting than watching something you haven't? Stop the fucking presses! damage to various parts of your prefrontal cortex. The good news is that this damage has been shown to be impermanent if the addiction is broken, but the bad news is that it makes it incredibly difficult to break and even acknowledge the reality of the addiction. For example, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is associated with self-discipline, self-control, and I love how his science gives you no choice but to accept the fact that he's right. Because, hey, to even say, yeah, I'm not buying into this horse shit. And you want to say porn's immoral, fine. You want to say we shouldn't watch it, fine. If you want to say that's a bad choice to make, fine. But don't tell me, motherfucker, that I'm doing watching porn because I have no choice. Because porn is making... It, fuck you. And let me tell you why drugs are addictive. It has nothing to do with... Oh, it lights up this part of your brain. Asshole, it's a fucking chemical. When people stop watching porn when they're on your 60-day detox... All this use, all this drug language, user, detox. You know, what, you you really want to know what a detox is? It's sweating, throwing up, shitting yourself for days on end, feeling like you have the worst life. That's why drug addicts can't quit, dude. There, there's a mental, there, there's a physical consequence to quitting heroin. There's a physical consequence to quitting most drugs. Nothing fucking happens to you when you quit pornography. That's the insult. That's the bullshit. And I hate to sound condescending here, but all of these pictures he's showing you of uh, electrons firing th through nerves, they're animations. They're not pictures of the inside of somebody's brain. And hey, Doyle, I don't know how you feel about the trans agenda, but you're using the same science that they use to prove that your little boy is could be a little girl and that your little girl could actually be a little boy. Exact same fucking shit. Exact same science. Exact same presentation. And I'll say the same thing to you that I said to Professor Dave. Show me a fucking CAT scan result. Show me the data that came out. Show me the readings from an actual machine that measures brain waves. Not in animation where it does with a little thing flick flying around the brain or a little part that's highlighted it says exactly what you want it to tell me. So you got one or two choices again here, Bucko. You can either keep your stupid porn addiction shit and admit that they're right, that your little boy can really be a little girl, because his neurochemical neurons are going to places and lighting up his brain, or you can admit that he's full of shit and you're full of shit. You can't do both. Oh, well, here is one good thing about the 50s. Here's something the 50s did have over now. You're right. The 50s are better. People owned their own decisions. And look for they didn't look for other things to blame for their problems, to blame for their actions. People took responsibility for their actions. And as a Christian, aren't you supposed to do that? Aren't you, aren't you supposed to believe that people are making choices based on good and evil, as opposed to uh, being controlled by forces that, that that's making excuses. That's completely against your religion. <clears throat> and have you, have you tried this, John Doyle? Have you tried watching porn? Watch porn for a significant amount, amount of time that you do anyway. But let, let, just watch porn for a significant amount of time yourself and see how hard a time you have quit and see if it's really that much of a challenge. And don't try to say that his bull, uh, D Professor Dave's transgender science bullshit is rooted, it is a, a result of porn addiction. Fuck you. I'm not going to let that fly either. And you talk about people making excuses to obfuscate uh, their addiction. Your whole premise is obfuscating responsibility so they can pretend to be addicted to something. Do the most unmanly thing in the world and blame something other than yourself. Uh, some girl was walking down the street. She wasn't wearing a bra, and I saw her. Uh, I could I could see her tits through her shirt, and I, I, and the next thing I know, I pulled out my phone and I look up some porn, and then I I blacked out. I woke up in the park naked, covered in cum, like a werewolf. It was the porn, sweetie, the porn. Sex addiction. Yeah, Tiger Woods has sex addiction. No, he just has opportunities. And even still, I mean, regardless of how kinky it weird it might be. Sex is still happy. It's a pleasant thing to watch. 
your shit, listening to you is fucking miserable. Listening to all of you guys is fucking miserable. What pleasure centers are lighting up in my brain when I'm watching something and hearing shit that's miserable? Why is the good thing the unhealthy thing? Eh, there, there's a question. You ever see Million Dollar Baby? Yeah, that's a great movie, right? Up until Hillary Swank breaks her neck on a fucking stool. And then you're sitting there going like, damn, it seems like a little late in this movie for a get back up and and win start. Oh shit, they're sawing her legs off? Now they're unplugged? What the fuck, Clint East? Well, why did you do this to me? Why? Why? What, what, what was the meaning of this? Why did this have to happen, man? Over here fucking crying, miserable. But it's bad for me if I were to watch her, you know, have some sex instead. How do you keep uh, good times from breeding weak men? I don't know. Stop packaging and selling them a weakness. That, that would be a good idea. Think anybody in the 1950s would have stood for that excuse? Think anybody in your, your treasured 1950s was walking around claiming to have a fucking pinochle addiction? No, because that's pornography. I have nothing to do with my religious beliefs. I was actually against pornography, believe it or not, before I really came into the faith. Oh, so you're just a deer then. Probably are. You know that you're not alone and that there's no shame in this at all. A lot of times people on the right have this attitude of, well, you're on your own, bucko. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Your problems aren't my problems, snowflake. No, you saw a way to make money off of it. That, that's, that's what you saw. The reason everybody says pull yourself up by your bootstraps, bucko, is because at one time in this world, we actually had men we admired. I mean, even if they weren't real. I mean, Burt Reynolds is the bandit. That was a male icon. Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, that's a male icon. Men were used to look up the achievement, be, being the best at something. The blood sport. I train, I'm the best. I work hard every night and day. Live hard to live my dream. Kumite, Kumite, Kumite. Anyway, that's the point. I, I, I've trained up to be the best I could be at what I want to be. I want to be the best fighter pilot. You know, Top Gun. You look up to that guy. Stories of actually, you know, overcoming things and a real, you know, personal challenge that actually helps your self-esteem. Not just constantly feeding you an addiction so I can keep feeding you money. Daniel say, hey, you getting bullied? Learn karate. Kick this guy's ass at a karate tournament. What do we get this generation? What do our men in this generation hold up as a high achievement? I haven't whacked off in 60 days. What do you want, a, a trophy a, 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 with a dude with a little statue of it not touching his dick? Again, go back to the 50s and brag about that. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Go back to the 50s and cry because you watch too much porn. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? And, and the whole thing, bragging about the success of his movement, that's another bullshit car. I mean, I... I Six million dollar net worth, you're not, you're doing something right. You're selling this shit pretty good. But uh, to constantly be bragging about how good your movement do is doing and everything, that's, that's another grift move or salesman tactic. Keep constantly letting people know you're successful. Shit, I better listen to him. His movement's working. Supposed to impress the sucker and intimidate the naysayer. You see this watch? That watch costs more than your car. I made $970,000 last year. How much you make? You see, pal, that's who I am, and you're nothing. Conservatism properly defined is that which conserves the traditional American society, and that actually requires helping and caring about your neighbors, your family, your community, etc. So I will reiterate that there's no... Damn right I'm a hero. People running things have hijacked and exploited our biological drives to pursue food and sex to where we're now fat and addicted to pornography, and that's made us weak. They've made a lot of money doing that. And as we'll get into, the reasons that drugs such as methamphetamine and heroin are so powerfully addictive is that they hijack the precise mechanisms that are designed to regulate sex in the reward center of our brain. In other words, the reason that drugs are so addicting is because they hijack the mechanisms in your brain that are used to regulate sexual desire and co-op them to compel you to crave more of that particular drug. So technically speaking, on a biological level, drugs are addictive because they exploit your sex drive, so to speak. So Dude, don't even sit here and pretend you know anything about drugs, drug users. You have no fucking empathy for it. You don't understand it. As you mentioned earlier when you said heroin addicts, 
that's why they describe shooting up as feeling like an orgasm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know your circles. Which, again, go ahead and let everybody know that you're better than us, because that always m makes for a great counselor. You know, drugs have a physical consequence to quitting them that makes it hard. Porn addicts are guys who just want to say they fucked up, but they don't want to sound stupid or accept responsibility for how it could possibly be their fault. It does practically the same thing to your brain. And we'll go through this step by step, but this is why even heroin addicts will tell you that shooting up feels like an orgasm if, when you talk to one. I don't know your circle. Well, I guess I can tell you what research didn't contribute to your mountain of data, knowing a goddamn drug addict. You think if you were going to compare drug addicts to porn addicts, you'd actually go talk to a drug addict. But I mean, God, God forbid you get near those circles. You're above that. I mean, God, imagine me, Sean Doyle, talking to a drug addict. No, I could just go to the Internet and to Christian science websites and, you know, other things that have my uh, conservative and political religious slant and find all the information I need there pornography users, those who will become addicted and those who already are addicted. Yeah, and there's two types of you super moral Christian do-gooder, no sex before marriage, no pornography, I don't whack off type guys, policing other people's sex lives, the ones that have been caught sucking a dick in an airport bathroom and the ones that are about to be caught sucking a dick in an airport bathroom category you have those who know they're addicted and those who don't know or perhaps refuse to accept that they're addicted or pauses the video and says <laughs> um is john doyle really comparing heroin addiction to pornography addiction all the only couple thousand viewers watch me pretend to stare blankly at the screen before looking at the camera like jim from the office no i'm not actually comparing the effects of heroin to the effects of pornography because the effects of pornography yes you did you lying little shit no this is where the irrelevant streamer yeah because you're relevant your relevancy means jack fucking shit, dude. Charles Manson was relevant. Again, you, you, uh, sex is the most powerful compulsion. Yeah, really? It doesn't hold a candle next to ego and immaturity. God damn, the right is so fucking immature about sex. That's why I don't take this seriously. You don't care any more about these people that you're supposedly trying to help than that guy in the Riddler jacket that used to sell real estate books in the 90s was interested in helping you get rich. And they're so corrupted by their desires that they simply can't imagine living without that occupying their consciousness because they're a slave. And so they'll say stuff because I'm a proponent of sexual morality. I detest hookup culture. And so they'll say, John Doyle's just mad because girls don't like him. He needs to get laid. And you look at these guys like, really? You and I go out to a bar or something. You think girls are going to be coming up to me like, oh, my God, who's your friend over there? No, no, you're coping like maybe man to man maybe you're picking up girls that are like high threes at best oh i love this a trophy of, uh, with, with a dude with a little statue of it not touching his dick again go back to the 50s and brag about that you can act like a man what's the matter with you go back to the 50s and cry because you watch too much porn you can act like a man what's the matter with you and, and the whole thing bragging about the success of his movement that's another bullshit car i mean i i Six million dollar net worth. You're not. You're doing something right. You're selling this shit pretty good. But uh, to constantly be bragging about how good your movement do is doing and everything, that's that's another grift move or salesman tactic. Keep constantly letting people know you're successful. Shit, I better listen to him. His movement's working. It's supposed to impress the sucker and intimidate the naysayer. You see this watch? That watch costs more than your car. I made $970,000 last year. How much you made? You see, pal, that's who I am, and you're nothing. Conservatism properly defined is that which conserves the traditional American society. And that actually requires helping and caring about your neighbors, your family, your community, etc. So I will reiterate that there's no... Damn right I'm a hero. People running things have hijacked and exploited our biological drives to pursue food and sex to where we're now fat and addicted to pornography, and that's made us weak. They've made a lot of money doing that. And as we'll get into, the reasons that drugs such as methamphetamine and heroin are so powerfully addictive is that they hijack the precise mechanisms that are designed to regulate 
sex and the reward center of our brain. In other words, the reason that drugs are so addicting is because they hijack the mechanisms in your brain that are used to regulate sexual desire and co-opt them to compel you to crave more of that particular drug. So technically speaking, on a biological level, drugs are addictive because they exploit your sex drive, so to speak. So Dude, don't even sit here and pretend you know anything about drugs, drug users. You have no fucking empathy for it. You don't understand it. As you mentioned earlier when you said heroin addicts, uh, that's why they describe shooting up as feeling like an orgasm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know your circles. Which, again, go ahead and let everybody know that you're better than us, because that always m makes for a great counselor. You know, drugs have a physical consequence to quitting them that makes it hard. Porn addicts are guys who just want to say they fucked up, but they don't want to sound stupid or accept responsibility for how it could possibly be their fault. It does practically the same thing to your brain. And we'll go through this step by step, but this is why even heroin addicts will tell you that shooting up feels like an orgasm if when you talk to one, I don't know your circle. Well, I guess I can tell you what research didn't contribute to your mountain of data, knowing a goddamn drug addict. You'd think if you were gonna compare drug addicts to porn addicts, you'd actually go talk to a drug addict, but I mean, God, God forbid you get near those circles. You're above that. I mean, God, imagine me, John Doyle. <laughs> Talking to a drug addict. <laughs> no, I could just go to the internet and to Christian science websites and, you know, other things that have my uh, conservative and political religious slant and find all the information I need there. Pornography users, those who will become addicted and those who already are addicted. Yeah, and there's two types of you super moral Christian do gooder, no sex before marriage, no pornography, I don't whack off type guys policing other people's sex lives, the ones that have been caught sucking a dick in an airport bathroom, and the ones that are about to be caught sucking a dick in an airport bathroom. In category, you have those who know they're addicted and those who don't know or perhaps refuse to accept that they're addicted. He pauses the video and says, <laughs> Um, is John Doyle really comparing heroin addiction to pornography addiction? All the only couple thousand viewers watch me pretend to stare blankly at the screen before looking at the camera like Jim from The Office. No, I'm not actually comparing the effects of heroin to the effects of pornography because the effects of pornography. Yes, you did, you lying little shit. No, this is where the irrelevant streamer. Yeah, because you're relevant. Your relevancy means jack fucking shit, dude. Charles Manson was relevant. Again, you, uh, sex is the most powerful compulsion. Yeah, really, it doesn't hold a candle next to ego and immaturity. God damn, the right is so fucking immature about sex. That's why I don't take this seriously. You don't care any more about these people that you're supposedly trying to help than that guy in the Riddler jacket that used to sell real estate books in the 90s was interested in helping you get rich. And they're so corrupted by their desires that they simply can't imagine living without that occupying their consciousness because they're a slave. And so they'll say stuff because I'm a proponent of sexual morality. I detest hookup culture. And so they'll say, John Doyle's just mad because girls don't like him. He needs to get laid. And you look at these guys like, really? You and I go out to a bar or something. You think girls are going to be coming up to me like, oh, my God, who's your friend over there? No, no, you're coping like maybe man to man maybe you're picking up girls that are like high threes at best oh i love this god could you be more arrogant all right let's assume we did this me and you went out to a bar and we got you and your fake id past the bouncer here's how this would go with brian doyle and they let's who can score the hottest piece of ass contest he's gonna sit there he's not gonna hook up with anybody and whatever girl I'm hooking up with, again, is going to be a three, it's going to be a two, it's not going to be as good as he could do. And then when you go, well, hey, go over there with that fat, ugly motherfucker with the swastika tattoos that's screaming about how he just got out of prison, and uh, see if you could steal, or see if your amazingness can steal the ten away from that fucking guy and take her home. Take her home and get you a piece of ass, you're so fucking charming. And then he's going to go... Yeah, I'm saving myself for marriage because I'm a good Christian and I'm moral and I believe in the moral thing. So you're going to take that cop out. And that whole thing. I just don't. And the reason for that is very simple. And it's that as human beings in the pursuit of virtue and truth, we can only reach the truth if we conquer and have total control over our desires. Otherwise, we will view everything through the lens of our desires since we do not have control over them, but rather they have control over us. And given that sexual desire is the most powerful desire that we have as human beings, I refuse to listen to degenerate people argue in favor of degenerate things. 
things. Because what is very likely happening is that they have a proclivity towards whatever aids in or alleviates the guilt from that desire, and that ultimately distorts the truth. You wouldn't listen to a heroin addict talk about why heroin isn't actually a bad thing. You shouldn't listen to a porn addict argue the same. Their minds are corrupted by their desires, and they are rationalizing it. And this is the part where the irrelevant streamer pauses the video and says... <laughs> Um, is John Doyle really comparing heroin addiction to pornography addiction? All the only couple thousand viewers watch me pretend to stare blankly at the screen before looking at the camera like Jim from The Office. No, I'm not actually comparing the effects of heroin to the effects of pornography because the effects of pornography have far worse implications on our society. We'll get into that. But even that in itself proves my point because there's this subculture of these really gross and vulgar leftists who exist online to let me live in their head rent free. Yes, yeah, says the guy who has the masturbation habits of teenage boys living rent free in his. Not everybody that disagrees with you is a leftist. I was open to hearing what you had. I mean, I don't believe in porn addiction, but I'm open to hearing about like what you had to say. See, you lost me with that shitty little attitude. You lost me by telling me you don't give a fuck about what anybody has to say unless they agree with you. You're acting like an expert on shit you know nothing about. You know nothing about addicts. You know nothing about relationships either. Look, I don't listen to fucking virgins tell me how to have relationships. I don't listen to guys who had one girlfriend their entire fucking life tell me how to be a man. You're still a virgin, all right? And let me tell you about male virginity. It's a little complicated, all right? You're not, you're not out of it yet. It's a three-step process, okay? You got to bang that first girl. Then you got to have a real relationship. Then you got to know what this shit feels like. I guess rose has its when you understand this song, not just by reading comprehension, but really fucking get it. When you know what it feels like, when hearing that song takes you back, to, to that moment, and when it when it's written, and after you've slept with somebody, by the way, you're not in a real relationship until you've slept with somebody. This is something guys who married their first girlfriend, which, you know what, that's fine if it's your high school sweetheart, but don't try to wait, don't wait till you're fucking 32 like Steven Crowder, because virginity is fucking poisonous to a man. One, I, I have a mountain of data, too, that shows this. Uh, here they are. Ted Kaczynski, Jared Lee Loughner, Adam Lanza, uh, what's his fucking name? Elliot Roger, Ed Gein, Steven Crowder. I mean, granted, he's not a serial killer or a mass shooter, but he's a fucking asshole, from what I hear. But uh, he's not a virgin anymore, because you know what? He gets this song now. I wasn't the right track, but... Well, it is Steven Crowder. He does like to dress in drag, so maybe it was the right track. Who knows? And because of what we can prove that it does to your being, like just because it's hard to conduct an experiment with the proper controls because of how widespread this issue is and how inherently private it is doesn't mean that you get to be like, no, this has been debunked. Sex positive psychologist told me so. No. And even that aside, the studies that we do have that explore this with the proper methodology all align with our position. So your opinion is invalid. Coom brain. A thousand percent increase in erectile dysfunction. In the hey, kid. Fuck you. If you really want to know the truth, I don't listen to children. And I just children. If you really want to know the dirty secret about kids your age, Right wing, left wing, don't matter, kid. You're a fucking communist. I saw you over uh, on, I, I would show you this video if it wasn't 13 fucking gigabytes large and I could actually download it. But go check it out. John Doyle versus Brianna Wu. He's going to stand up there in front of a fucking college and make a debate for why it's okay, uh, an argument for why it's okay for the government to just circumvent the First Amendment and take porn and ban pornography. So he does, he, he can't be tempted to watch it anymore and you, you you're you're making that argument you want the government to step in and ban something uh ban a free sp a thing that is covered under free speech so this ain't the first time we had this argument in society you're not the first person to discover porn you know who else used to make this argument feminists andrea dorkin that's what you are you're andrea dorkin with a smaller dick no less so you already lost this argument when you were saying the government should come in and start banning content 
and deciding for me what I should be able to view and not view, you lose already, you little commie motherfucker. You actually have the balls to go around making that argument and call your show, heck off, commie. Yeah, I don't listen to children. And you know what, dude? There's a good reason. Nobody should be listening to you. Especially if they are a porn addict. Not that there's any such thing, but if they were. You know why? Because you have no empathy for their plight. None whatsoever. It's just a good money grift. Again. I can tell by listening to you, you are fucking compassionless as I am for that issue. Other than the fact that they're paying you to pretend to give a fuck. Because again, we have a pathetic society of men who need to find another grown man's shoulder to cry on uh, because they can't handle life. I'm real fucking sorry. And look, you don't want to watch porn anymore. You don't want to make that. You want to make that personal. You want a real moral reason to not watch porn? If you really want, need to, no, if you just want to quit watching it, quit watching. But if you need to, if you need to beat the addiction with a moral reason, here it is. You want to know what the number one cause of death is in for actors in that industry? I'll give you a couple guesses. Uh, tr Hang on, I'll do it in that obnoxious, uh, only idiots uh, arguing, could possibly argue with me voice that a lot of vloggers, including John Doyle, likes to do. Um, let me guess, uh, drug overdoses because they're all degenerate drug addict scum? No, that's actually not. I mean, that's number three, but that ain't it. Um, suicide because they're so ashamed of their degenerate lifestyle? Again, close, number two, but, uh, not it. Uh, it's murder, actually. Yeah, it's astonishing when, once you go actually look up real information about porn from somewhere other than, uh, a church. Yeah, these women get murdered a lot. You might be beating off to a girl who it had her, it was found in a car with her throat cut. There. There's you a good moral reason to stop. Here's another moral reason to stop. The whole the industry now, which I mean it probably always was, I think they always had a hand in it. You're funding organized crime. Got a problem with crime? Then hey, don't give pornography money. Because those are the guys who run that industry. Sons of Anarchy is not that far off. Another moral reason to not watch this shit is because it's now so unregulated that it's making it really easy for things like child porn and trafficked children and shit like that. It's helping that business. There's a good moral reason to stop. There, I, I just handed you, what, three, four maybe? Moral reasons to quit watching porn that ain't got nothing to do with poor widow you. Or your narcissistic quest to, for self-enlightenment or self-betterment or self-empowerment. Or whatever you commie homos your age are fucking into. And since all you guys are such relationship experts with all, all of your experience with your one girlfriend that you don't keep acting like you're better than me for finding. Yeah, I remember my first girlfriend too, dude. It's so special. But what what's lighting up in your brain? What, what drugs are, are your body on when you're in love? When you think you're in love? If you want to talk about something that'll do some serious fucking da uh, emotional... Uh, damage to your life is the pursuit of love. I've been put through more pain looking for love than I, I, I think I could ever could have in hookup culture. And it's worth the ride. Love is an amazing drug. But, uh, I mean, I mean, that's what it is. Your love isn't special. It wasn't ordained by God. Shut up, addict! And if I did have a porn addiction, let's live in fantasy land where that's actually real, why would I come to you for help? There's a reason that uh, drug counselors are themselves former addicts because they actually know from firsthand experience what the person's going through. So when they're telling somebody, no, man, fight through it. Just fight through it. Just you can do it. Fight through it. The guy can't look at him and go, how the fuck would you know? Do you have no idea what I'm going through? You just keep calling me an addict and a degenerate and bragging on how amazing you are and how many people you've helped by screaming addict in, in their face. You don't know what I'm fucking going through. You're sitting here lording on a cloud above me like you're fucking Jesus, the boy with a golden butthole, the kid who doesn't watch porn. M meanwhile, dude, every real adult, we know what the envious ramblings of the kid who can't get laid. We we all know what that sounds like, dude. I've I've been that guy. That was I've been that kid at certain points. Sound like me ranting about every girl, uh, the boyfriends of every girl I tried to fuck in high school. So I know what that attitude is. I know what that sounds like.
Do may, maybe you know what the root of the problem is, dude? Maybe you just, or maybe you're jealous of these dudes, these well hung dudes in great shape that fuck hot girls and get paid for it. And you got to go out and do this sad little song and dance. I mean, anybody that uh, talks about what other people uh, think of their position in the um do a voice, that's again so pathetic and lame, immature. And all you're doing is just taking the stupidest shit they could possibly say on the subject and presenting that as their argument. I know somebody, another communist I know does that all the time. This dude, Renegade Cut, who you sound very much like. You've made me pause this video as many times as he does when I've tried to make one of these about him. That, that is coming, by the way. Yeah, porn is kind of fucking up society. I don't completely disagree with you there, but see, here's the problem with... Another problem with your study, another problem with your entire position, you don't listen to addicts and degenerates. I don't listen to assholes who pretend they don't watch porn, because you're fucking lying. Anybody with any common sense knows you're fucking lying. Well, let me tell you how un... But see, when Candace Owens... See, I'd have this conversation with Candace Owens, too, and I wouldn't be near, nowhere near as mean, because when she says that... She doesn't watch porn. She thinks it's disgusting. She thinks it's the I fucking believe her. I don't believe you. All right. Let me tell you a story. This is a true story. It's an absolutely a true story. So I'm driving through Miramar Beach. It's a few years ago. This is like 2007. And I pass by a woman. She's hitchhiking. I stop. I pick her up. And uh, you wouldn't believe this shit. It's Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. Yeah. See, her rent a car broke down. She needed a ride to an airport. So I gave her a ride to the airport, right? <laughs> She's uh she's very nice. We pulled into the airport and uh she just re I didn't ask. She just reached over, unzipped my fly, pulled out my dick and gave me the the most incredible blowjob I've ever had in my life. I mean, almost sucked my asshole up through my 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 di into my dickhead. That is how fucking good this woman can suck a dick. All right? She swallows. She doesn't even stop. She doesn't even acknowledge anything happened. Just bloop, and just keeps going. I had to make this woman quit. It was turning into Guantanamo Bay torture. That's how good this fucking blowjob was, right? She's done. She goes, all right, thanks for the ride. She's very, uh, again, I can't emphasize how nice Ellen DeGeneres was. Anyway, she gets out, and uh, that's that. Even if, you do understand, right, that even if, that that's how unbelievable you claiming to not be one of the 98% of guys that has accessed porn in the last uh, week or month or whatever it was, is... See, you see, even if the story I just told you was true, which it is, uh, you'd have to be a fucking moron to believe it if I told it to you. That is the faultiest part of your entire cause. See, if you were sitting here going like, I struggled for many years with porn addiction, um... And I, I just, I, I can't, I don't want to watch other, other men go through what I went through. Then fuck, dude, I would have so much more sympathy for you. Shut up, Annex. I don't listen to Annex. Fucking douchey Hauser over here. Ugh. All right. All right, I did my hour. Must have had it with this little faggot. All right. See you next week. So while Brian Doyle and the rest of the world says, Eat shit and die, Ricky. I say, eat shit and live. Goodbye. Now all of you, get the fuck out now before I get too mad to turn back. All y'all, now get the fuck out. Come on, you motherfuckers. Get the fuck out. Randy, you tuning son of a bitch. Don't fucking practice, Randy. Come on, Morris, you fucking genius! Get the fuck up and get the fuck out of here! God damn it!